Good morning. Welcome to Good Shepherd Lutheran Church this Sunday morning at 930. We're so happy that you are with us and that you joined us today. We are going to start off once again with a song. Jacob, what are we singing? All right. We are going to be singing Seek Ye First. Now, I kind of want to just go over the words again uh, in case you forgot. So I'm just going to speak the words through, once through, and then we'll sing it. Okay, so the words are, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Alleluia. Alleluia. Okay? Let's uh, try singing that together. Seek ye first the Some of you may be thinking, but Mr. Dave, we had such a long winter. Aren't you so excited that it's starting to warm up and get nice again? Yes, absolutely. Make no mistake, once spring came and the snow was all gone, I could not have been happier. Now, the difference is now that it feels like it's 80-ish degrees in the sanctuary right now. I don't know if you can tell. I'm starting to sweat a little bit. Sweating is not my favorite thing. So what would you do if you were hot and sweaty? What would you need to have to feel comfortable? Some water, right? A little bit of water couldn't hurt anybody. In fact, water is essential for us to live, right? Now, how much water would it take for the summer? Do you think I can make this last all summer? Do you think? No? Okay. Um, what about this guy? This guy is my big, giant water bottle. Definitely makes me feel better, right? But I drink one of these during worship each Sunday while we're filming, and I'm singing in order to help keep my throat clear, right? So if I go through one of these each Sunday, then that's not enough. So I'm going to be thirsty again, right? Okay, well, this, this has to be the answer. A five-gallon igloo water dispenser, right? This certainly should keep my thirst quenched throughout the summer. Do you think that's going to work? Do you think any of those things are going to remain full enough to keep me thirsty? Or better yet, do you think I'm going to be able to drink the water from the jug quick enough to where it doesn't get moldy? See, water can actually go bad too. Now, Jesus talks about in our gospel lesson today, he says, whoever believes in me out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Rivers of living water out of our heart. Okay, so is that going to help my thirst? Is that the kind of water that we're talking about here? No, right? 
Like we talked about earlier, water can go bad. When water stops flowing or moving, when water is stagnant, when it's still, like in that jug and it's sealed off and there's, you know, air kind of on top of it, it can go bad. Or if you have like a lake and there's no water running into it, water running out of it, that water is not safe to drink, right? It's not going to be good for you. It's going to actually hurt you. So sometimes water can be bad. But he's talking about living water. This water is pure and clean and good for them. Kind of like what's in a bottle that you get. You know, it's clean. It's pure. It hasn't been tainted until you unseal it, right? So if you had rivers of living water flowing out of you, you'd never be thirsty again, right? You would never need to be refilled. Jesus is using this water context in this story because water was pretty important to the people back then. Do you know how they had to get water? They would have to take a jug of water from their house, walk to the well, get the water out of the well, pour it into the jug, then take the jug back to the house. And they'd probably have to do this a couple times a day at least. And we're talking big jugs of water, right? So the water runs out and they have to go get more, right? So water being so important, also they're in a desert, right? Water being so important, Jesus uses this as his analogy. Jesus says, whoever believes in me, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now the people started to understand it, right? Just like living water keeps our body alive, the Holy Spirit brings eternal life to everyone who believes in Jesus. Now how does he do that? So we talked about the water in the cup, the water in the bottle, the water in the jug. Now they can't help us spiritually, right? But what about the water that's in here? What do we get from the water that's in here? Is the water any different in here than, say, in the bottle or in the jug? We actually get the water from the same place, right? So what makes this water special? This water is special because of the Word of God. Because of the Word mixed with the water makes this water special. And that's when we have baptism, right? We get baptized and receive Jesus in our lives. We receive the Holy Spirit. We receive that faith as a free gift from God. We did nothing to earn that gift. It was just given to us freely. And that water cleansed us of our sins, of our impurities, right? So today in church, we're talking about Pentecost, right? The story of Pentecost, the story of how the disciples all of a sudden could preach the living word to people who didn't even speak their language. The Holy Spirit came into them and allowed them to speak in tongues so everyone could hear the good news, the gospel of Jesus' death and resurrection in their own language. Now this was pretty special, right? Because what is the most important thing for us to do here on earth? It's to share God's word. Right? And sometimes language is a barrier, but the Holy Spirit made it so that it wasn't a barrier to the disciples at that time. They were able to preach to everyone, to share that living word, and to talk about that living water, which they then would baptize and add to their number increasingly. So when we are baptized, God uses regular water to wash away our sins and bring us the living water of the Holy Spirit. Then he lives in us forever and will never run out of that living water within us. Can you guys pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to bring me your forgiveness and the gift of eternal life through your son, Jesus. Help me to let your blessings 
flow from me to others. As I tell them about you, and act in ways that show your Holy Spirit in me. And all God's people said, Amen. Thank you so much again for joining us this morning. I just realized that at the beginning of the video I said you were joining me at 9.30, but it's actually 9. Please stick around until 9.30 so that we can all worship together. Once again, we can receive that forgiveness that confession and absolution, and have our sins continue to be cleansed from us as we received initially in our baptism. So please, stick around and worship with us, even though we are apart. I love you all. I'll see you when I see you.